Hi, I'm Lee Majdub, and you're watching the Permanent Rain Press. I am happy to be joined by 2021 Leo Award nominee Lee Majdub. How's it going? Very good, very good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm excited to be catching up with you, chatting about The 100 Season 7, which we didn't go into details last time around. But now that it's out and released, uh, I will give a spoiler warning to all those watching. Please watch Season 7 in its entirety, <laughs> and then you can come back and watch our interview with Lee. Um, Okay, you've been warned. Let's you've talk warned. about spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk about that final scene where Nelson or Sachin meets his end. Take me through your emotions on set and during filming that day. Uh yeah, that was that was uh that was quite the scene. And I mean, leading up to it, it was really interesting because we ended season six with uh, you know the writers and everything weren't quite sure what they were going to do with Nelson's story and, and the children of Gabriel. And, and then, um, you know, they kind of came up with this I idea of like, Oh, you know, me, like just treat them like they're displaced people and, and uh, have Nelson be their point of view for the show. Um, you know, so leading up to that scene, it was, it was interesting because I didn't know episode to episode, like, what are we going to do? Like, where is he going? Um, is he actually going to side with Shade Hayda? Is he not? Like, where does he lie? He's a very intricate character. I love, I love playing him. Um, and so, yeah, when I read, when I read that scene, it felt like that was the only way for Nelson to go. You know, I was, I was sad that you know the the children of Gabriel around him had to to die as well um but yeah leading up to it i don't i don't know it was, it was emotional in the sense of you know being on a show like that i've got some friends on the show and, and having wanted to be a part of that family for you know seven years and, and and you know being brought on and so it was emotional just as is and uh you know um jr and i had worked quite a bit together I think it was it wasn't the episode before but I think it's it's the episode you see Nelson in before so I think it's like four episodes before that or whatever where he tries to kill uh JR's character Shade Heda and then there's that discussion so JR and I talked a lot we really clicked um as friends and as as peers and so it was you know to just have him in front of me in that scene he's someone that you can that helps you get grounded so easily and uh, a lot of times it's just, it's just about breathing and being present and uh trusting in, in the words that are written for you um you know richard was there that day and just having such a connection with him as a friend and you know he gave me a hug before like we went to that scene and that helps you know um and just trusting the crew around, like we built such a great rapport and um, the director, she was fantastic. She really, really helped in the sense of she, she gave me time in the scene to breathe, you know, and she was like, there's no rush. Um, and then the, the background actors that were playing the children of Gabriel, a lot of them I had been with episode to episode and a few of them like, such amazing people would always check in with me like throughout the season be like you know hey is there anything we can do hey is there you know like uh do you, do you want us to be close to you do you want us to give you some space so it became very like we became a team in that sense too and so it's just such a powerful feeling to have people standing beside you behind you that you feel are there with you whether it's in the scene or whatever you're doing. And then just the image, like, you know, we used blanks for that, uh, for the AK that went off and um, to just look around at them and really just genuinely see, you know, these people that have done everything to kind of um, be there for me as an actor and wanting to be a part of it and to look at them on the, like, I mean, there wasn't much, um, 
much to do if that makes sense. You know, you just take in the scene and, and you just you just breathe it in. And and you know, it's the last time I'm going to see Jr. It's the last time I'm going to see these backgrounders. It's the last time I'm going to see Rick on set. Um, and it's a beautiful story too. You know what I mean? Like it's hard not to feel emotional with Nelson's story and the Children of Gabriel and just wanting to belong and have a place you know um to live in an identity and you know to get to a point where it's either you side with us and have a home but you're going to do you know we're going to kill we're going to do or whatever or are you going to stick to your morals and values and that means death and i love the line i absolutely love the line um death is life that nelson says and to me, it just meant that, you know, you can, you can live infinite lives, but at some point it's no longer living. Like, you know, the fact that you're going to die, the fact that life is finite means you need to live it up to its fullest, it means you should be a good person, you know, be of service, you know, like do what you can to live a good life in the short time that you have. So all those factors, like, I don't know if I've answered your question really, but I think there was so, I was so blessed to have so many different things there that just like you know helped me stay grounded and, and it was it was a tough scene but it was also there was a simplicity to it if that makes sense I think that you did such a beautiful job breaking down that scene you've touched on so many aspects like having that support with the cast and crew and then you mentioned that line it was so powerful and I think really important to kind of close that character him reclaiming mm. his identity at the very end you mentioned like the show can go very dark um, yeah. on the opposite spectrum you lead with positivity and love and that's evident in everything from social media interactions um, you know talking to you during interviews tell me why it's important to share that with others um Thank you for saying that. Um, it's, I don't know, you know, like I, I told myself something early on, like I, I struggled a lot early on when I started acting and, and, you know, there were like some personal demons that I was dealing with and, um, and working through. And then once I started that journey of, of working through some things, um, realizing that I think so many of us go through, uh, whether it's mental, emotional, spiritual, whatever it is, struggles, and we don't talk about it. And I think, you know, not necessarily that I wouldn't have gone through the struggles, but I wouldn't have felt so alone if, if, uh, if, it, if it wasn't deemed so taboo to speak about mental health, you know, to speak about identity, to speak about, um, you know, uh, race whatever it is and uh, and the struggle of pursuing you know whatever it is that you're trying to pursue in life like we don't talk about that enough you know we feel like we have to rush through life and figure out what we need to do like i didn't take my first acting class until i was 20 you know and then i didn't i didn't start working until i was about 25 26 was like my first gig and i think i could have really used knowing that hey you can breathe you can take a second there's more to life than this you know learn about you um and the career will come and friendships will come and um all of those things will take care of themselves and for me i don't know i just feel like i have a responsibility to um to be there for people and be a voice in the sense of like no i struggle too day in and day out, still at this point in my career, I think, um, you know, to the outside world, you can look at someone's career or, or look, at, look at their outside life and be like, oh, I wish I had that, you know? Um, and, and not acknowledge the fact that, oh, you know, even though this all looks great, I still have my insecurities. I still have my struggles. I still wake up sometimes and I'm like, I, don't know what this day is going to bring. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I don't, you know, and it's about taking a deep breath and being kind to yourself. And I think that's really important just to share with, with people. And, and I think a lot of people need, need to hear that. It just, if, even if it just gives you like today to, to breathe and like a sigh of relief and be like, oh, okay. It's okay. If I like 
if all I do is have a shower, you're like, it's okay. Like, you know what I mean? There's some of those days where it's like, and we beat ourselves up. I was like, all I did was have a shower. Well, maybe that's, you know, as long as you were kind to yourself and, you know, that's going to, you know, help you recharge your batteries and, and, and you can get to work tomorrow or the day after or whenever, you know, and um, no rush in figuring out what you want to do with your life. Just, you know, if you're, if you're working on yourself and trying to figure out, you know, working through trauma and everything, it's going to happen. Like, you know, you'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, I just feel like, uh, and it's happening. Like more and more people are talking about it. Like it's great to see so much more positivity on social media and, and uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel like, I don't know. I just have a responsibility to do that. I feel okay. like I owe it to fans. You know? Yes. I think it's, yeah, like you said. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. A, a community that has really embraced, you know, you and those positive affirmations and feelings is that of Sonic the Hedgehog, obviously. Mm -hmm. Agent Stone, a fan favorite in the first movie. Did you ever imagine how popular the idea of steamed Austrian goat milk lattes <laughs> would become? <laughs> when you know that was in the script when you read it for the first time any idea none like it was it was it's just like you know look, looking a few years back it's still really this element of of having to pinch myself to uh to remember to realize that i'm part of this world i'm part of the sega family i'm part of the uh sonic family i'm part of like uh that fandom um you know especially growing up and playing the game and uh and, you know being a jim carrey fan uh so all of that was like that's what i was going through at the moment and and in a sense like i think we spoke to about this last year a little bit but you know and i, I think it's common knowledge now that that agent stone you know the, that character and the relationship with him and Robotnik continued to get fleshed out more and more and more as we shot. You know, and uh, things would get rewritten and and more ideas would pop up. And the street, the steamed Austrian goat milk thing was, uh, you know, funny enough. Like that scene was it didn't have a specific as far as like what kind of latte it was just an extra hot latte. And um, I was just googling the night before, like you know, pretentious coffee orders. And I saw on a Reddit forum that one barista had had someone order a latte with Austrian goat milk. And so I show up the next day to set, you know, and, and Jim and I are chatting and, you know, he's got all these amazing ideas and, and he's like, and I told him, oh, I had, I have an idea. And he's like, oh, okay. Like, well, what is it? What is it? You know? And I'm excited that he wants to hear it. And I tell him the Austrian goat milk. And he starts laughing and he's like, we got to incorporate that. So incorporate that here. I'll say this. And, um, you know, and then we tried to figure it out. Like, oh, do we add steamed to the line, like a steamed Austrian goat milk or just an extra hot Austrian goat milk or whatever. And then we just found it just so funny to, that an Austrian goat milk like would be steamed and, you know, and add it to a latte. And, and yeah, it seems like it's, 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 it's a, favorite moment for a lot of people in that movie just the and a lot of people talk about like just the cuteness of agent stone standing there with the two coffees just kind of you know shoulder dancing with uh with robotnik and the like him in the background and um i just love it it's just such a feel-good movie and i like the character so much um i love that fans took, took such a liking to to him and, and the relationship between him and, and dr robotnik that improv moment, um, magic, obviously. You're, you're reaping the benefits of it still. Um, now, I wanted to talk about being a part and interacting with the Sonic community. What do you think has been your number one moment so far? I know you've had so many, it's hard mm -hmm. to pick one, but if you had to. It's, you're, you're right, there, there have been a lot of moments and it's really hard to pick one. I mean, you know, there's the fan art for sure um that is so endearing and every time I, I see you know a new art piece it's just you know it warms my heart and, and especially for me it's to see like I've had artists reach out to me and say you know I 
I stopped drawing for a while and then, you know, this inspired me to, to, to get back into it. Those types of things I love, right? If, if I can, if I can inspire or if a project I do can inspire you to find your creativity again, find your passion again, whatever it is. I love that. Like it's, it's so heartwarming. Um, I would have to say that being involved with Sonic gave me the opportunity uh, last year to um, go to some children's hospital visits in, in LA and be able to visit some kids out there and, and sign a bunch of merch and, and chat with them. They got to watch the movie. I, I'm, you know, um, I, uh, I'm associated slightly every now and then I help out with, uh, or, or show up and do little story times and everything with uh, a not-for-profit called the Lollipop Theater organization that they basically, uh, or network. Lollipop Theater Network. Uh, and basically what they do is they uh, they take whatever movies are out in the theaters that kids in hospitals can't go see, they bring them the DVD copy, they bring them the digital copy so kids don't miss out on seeing those movies in the theaters. And then they figure out like, okay, who's someone involved in that production that can come and visit with the kids. And that like that whole experience, just you know, meeting those kids and their families and being able to uh, chat with them and you know we don't poke fun at like how much fun they had watching Age of Stone get abused and you know I just like what do you do? what do you mean like come on that's not that's not nice but uh, yeah so it's it's uh, it's a blessing to be part of that you know what I mean just I think anything you can do to help uplift the spirit of others and you can see that is is a win-win situation how big is your sonic memorabilia collection today oh uh what do i have what do i have so i've got um so i've got like this uh sonic statuette i've got um a candle like this this awesome candle it's like the box that you hit uh but made into a candle in the game the box that you hit in the game and then I've got a Sega Genesis Mini um, with Sonic 2, Sonic 1, all of those on it. Uh, I've got the DVD. Uh, what else do I have? I think you have some shirts. shirts. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, a couple the, of t-shirts. The really cool one, the custom Funko Pop of your character. Yes, yes. Where, did, where is it? Oh, moved up the window. There he is. Right here. Look at that. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Custom made. Like, it's amazing so amazing like it's so just cute wild too. yeah yeah it's just and looks exactly like me life-sized um yeah it's it's wild it's it's just you know hard to put words to it you know what i mean just like oh hey someone made a custom bucko pop for you you know you're getting sent sonic memorabilia you're like it's, you're part of this amazing world and this amazing fan base that you know, has become such a positive force, you know, um, it's really great. You have some lovely cats at home. Have they ever <laughs> looked at Sonic, the character around your place? And do you think that they're intuitive to realize the impact that the character has had in your life and career these past couple of years? I think they don't care. I think as long as they're getting fed and I'm not paying more attention to uh, my sonic memorabilia than I am to them, they're okay. Like, that's the understanding. Uh, but they're both jealous in their own ways. You know, like Cinema, who's the beautiful long haired white kitty that I have, uh, she'll, she, she does not hold back from throwing memorabilia off the table. A little bit of jealousy there, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then Jack Jack, you know, my more cared big boy, um, he, uh, he just kind of like will give me a look and, and and just be like, really, like really, you're just you're paying attention to that more than me. And it's almost like you see a tear forming in his eye that my Aww. heart breaks. And I feel like, and I'm like, come here, buddy. And then he he runs yeah. away. Drop so, the figurine yeah. down, pick the cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like as soon as I pay attention to him, he no longer wants wants the attention. Classic. <laughs> It's Classic. like that when you push away, pull back a little. Exactly, he's playing hard right? to get. Right. Yeah. He's playing hard to get. He's like, you don't, you don't want to pay attention to me. You don't want to pay attention to me. Okay, buddy, I'll pay attention. No, I don't want it anymore. That's okay. I don't, I don't want it anymore. Oh, to have animals, right? Right. Do you journey. have any? 
No, I, I no? <laughs> one day. Okay. I, I haven't had one yet. I've always wanted like a little kitten or puppy, but I think I'd have to get the house puppy right. proof or whatnot first. Yeah. You should, have you visited the cat cafe at all? Not Ever? yet, but I know okay. they just opened a bunny cafe. I saw that on their social media. That looks yeah. amazing. Hopefully you get to book a, book a spot sometime soon. Hopefully, hopefully sooner than yeah. later. Yeah. July 2nd, you are slated to participate in Little Hearts Learning's Quiz for the Cause. Uh, tell yes. me a bit about this anniversary celebration and why it was important for you to get involved. Well, um, there, the not-for-profit uh, Little Hearts Learning basically, uh, you know, helps build schools, um, uh, first aid uh, structures and, and areas in, uh, in places that don't have them. And it's, and it's mainly focused on, on helping kids. Um, and I think this one in particular is in Papua New Guinea. Um, and it's important to me because I think it's just, I don't know, anytime I, I can take part in something that's helping uh, in any way, shape or form, I wanna do that. I'll, I'm, you know, uh, I think this is what it's about. You know, the fact that I have the opportunity to do so, I feel like, or anytime that type of opportunity gets presented, I feel like I have a responsibility and an obligation. Um, I'm, I'm a big believer in, uh, what's, how do I word it? It's just when you're presented, like when, when life gives you these gifts of, you know, this career, this type of career and, you know, the type of fans and, you know, as you become, uh, I say, as the public starts to notice you a little bit more, I, I feel like you have to give back, you know, I think, it, and that's for me personally, you know, uh, I just feel like I have to give back, it's, 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 it's what, what I need to do, and this was a perfect opportunity to do so, and, and I think it's going to be real, really fun, uh, I think I'm going to be horrible at it. That's what um, I was going to say, have you been sharpening yeah. up on your quiz skills at all? Oh, I have no idea what I'm in for, I have... I have no idea. I think it's going to be fun. Uh, good people are involved. And, uh, you know, I think as long as we're having a laugh, having a good time and, and, and helping build, uh, you know, build the build first, uh, first aid um, structure area. I can't even phrase it, phrase what, what, what I'm talking about. Good but yeah, they're things, building a medical yes. center. There we go. It's there. a medical center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, I'm very good with words. That's why I'm an actor. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I need to be told what to say, and then and then I'm golden. But and then if you're if good. I have you just think, need it written yeah. out for you first. Yeah, yeah. If I have to think, game over. Yeah. So, um, Eliza, I think she's competing. Uh, mm -hmm. A bunch of people from the hundred, like Chelsea, Reese, and who else is going to be there? Uh, Michael Beach, uh, and Zach McGowan. I believe. And Bob Morley is, Bob hosting. is hosting. Do yeah. you think he'll be a good game host? Oh, I'm sure of it. Yeah. Yeah. Bob's a big fan of games in general. So I think, I think he's going to crush it. And I think he's going to, uh, I'm assuming he's going to try and trick a lot of us. Yeah. Throw a little curveball. Yeah. There. I think a yeah. lot of us are going to be like, yo, come on. That's not fair. We'll pretend 100%. we don't know who he might be in favor of, but like you mentioned, yeah, all yeah, for yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course, right? Yeah, yeah. we all, know what's going to happen. All for a good cause. Uh, people can buy tickets on Little Hearts Learning's website to yep. watch all the fun unravel July 2nd. Uh, do you have any 100%. other upcoming projects you, you are able to and would like to share with us, or is it? Um, I uh, there, there is there there are and i can i can say nothing i can't yeah i can't say can i say something i can't say anything exciting things are in the works <laughs> yeah. we'll leave it at that yeah yeah fun stuff fun stuff uh exciting um and i can't wait for people to find out what they are and our wild card question for you you Ooh, get to question. create your own Willy Wonka's three course dinner, chewing a gum. What will it be comprised of? Chewing a gum, a three course meal, chewing gum. Uh, it's going to start with, what's the appy? Um, 
let's go with some, uh, we'll go with some uh, edamame. Go with edamame, salted, like good salted edamame. Uh, we'll proceed with, uh, you know, a nice, uh, maybe we'll do some sushi rolls, some veggie sushi rolls, like a shizenya veggie sushi roll with a side of uh, spicy tofu. And then for dessert, we'll do a, a green tea ice cream. How's that? It's good too. It's all like concise. It's a good gum, I think. I think that yeah, gum and good. good Asian flavored, the full meal Great right Asian. there. Yeah, there you go. I think I'm craving some chisenya. <laughs> I don't think I've had I don't think I've had sushi for a while. So maybe maybe I'll order some after this. <laughs> I love it. Well, that was a good one. Um, make sure to follow Lee on social media to stay up to date with his upcoming projects. And we will see you next time. Thank you so much.